In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about excise tax, who pays taxes, and how much. I'm going to draw in a supply and demand curve. Equilibrium is a gray dot, and price is 8, and quantity is 6. I'm going to change the elasticity of demand and show you how revenue changes depending on the elasticity of demand. And I'll do that at several different points or different levels of elasticity. Imagine I assess a tax of three. What I do is I take my tax of three and I add it to my supply curve. So the entire supply curve shifts up like that. This would be an example of a retail tax on like on gasoline or cigarettes. I have a new equilibrium point at the green dot, and quantity is 4, and price is 9. But what happens is the producer only gets $6 or 6. A consumer pays 9, and a producer gets 6. Government collects a tax of $3 per unit sold. Quantity has decreased from 6 to 4, and prices have gone up from 8 to 9. It turns out total tax revenues can be defined as that green rectangle, and it happens to be 12. I take the height, which is 3, and width, which is 4. Let me show you that, actually. I take the tax of 3 times the quantity of 4, which is equal to 12. And that's our total tax revenues. The original price was 8, and now the consumer has to pay 9, so they bear a burden of 1 per unit, $1 per unit, whatever we want to use. And total taxes that they pay is the number of units times 1, which is 1 times 4. So they bear $4 of the tax. The producer pays $2 of the tax, and their total tax bill is 2 times quantity, which is 4. So their total tax is 8. So you can easily see the share is not equal when demand is elastic. Now, if I change demand and make it inelastic, I get a new equilibrium point there. And inelastic demand are things like cigarettes, gasoline. This is a bad combination, obviously. The quantity is 5, and the price is 10. And in this case, the producer gets 7. And the tax, of course, is still 3. Total revenues is that green rectangle, and it's 3, the tax of 3 times a quantity of 5, for a total of 15. So total tax revenues are 15. Now the supplier used to get 8, now they only get 7, so they bear a $1 per unit cost for the tax, and now the consumer used to pay, now they're paying 10. The consumer's total tax share is now two times a quantity of five, which is 10. And the producer's share is one times a quantity of five, which is now five. So revenues went up and the consumer's bearing a larger portion of the tax. So when I went from a relatively elastic to a relatively inelastic demand, revenues went up, consumers paid more, but producers paid less. The last example I'm going to do is if demand was totally inelastic like that, straight up and down. I have a new equilibrium point, which is 7, a quantity of 7, and a price of 11. 
Total tax is that green rectangle. Taxes are still $3 per unit. So, so now I have 3 times 7. So total taxes collected. Total revenues would be 21. And the consumer bears all of it. The producer is able to pass on all taxes to the consumer. Now if I put the other tax in for totally inelastic in with the others, and just to review what I did is I started out with demand relatively being elastic, and I changed it to being relatively inelastic, and I showed you how tax revenues went up, and the share the consumers paid went up, and also their total taxes went up, and finally, producers' taxes actually went down as demand becomes more inelastic. If you have questions or even requests for lessons to help you out with economics, put them in the comments section below. And please remember to subscribe because I post new videos and I revise videos often. And always remember our motto, 